Hi, everybody. My name is Joey Fight, and welcome to the Phys Ed Show. What is up, everybody? My name is Joey Fight. I'm the founder of thephysicaleducator.com, and I'm your host for this podcast. Welcome to the very first episode of the Phys Ed Show. I'm so fired up to be podcasting again and to be putting together this cool content and just to have this show as a medium through which I can share all of my passion and experience with all of you. So what is the Phys Ed Show anyways? Well, the Phys Ed Show is a physical education podcast in which I'll be sharing ideas from my teaching, interviews with Phys Ed thought leaders and other amazing teachers who have inspired me in my teaching, and special episodes and fun segments in which I'll be inviting you to join me in my learning journey. The purpose of the show really is to provide you with ideas and inspiration for your teaching that are going to light that fire in your belly and help you grow as an educator. I'm going to try and do all of this in this 20 to 30 minute episode format that I'll be publishing once a month. Now, I know that once a month doesn't sound like a lot. However, If you've been following my work for a while now, you'll know that I'm really good at starting new projects, but really bad at consistently following up with them. So a teacher's life is a busy life. I've got a ton on my plate right now. My wife and I are so fired up because we're expecting our first child, a baby boy, uh, in March this year. So I'm trying to be realistic with my actual goal setting here for this podcast. That said, as I get more comfortable with the new editing and podcasting process, I'll probably be able to pump out more episodes. But for now, I'd really rather just say I'm sticking to once a month and I hope you understand. That said, I'm also relaunching my vlog. So if you know about the scope vlog, it was this vlog that I was doing on Periscope um, and just kind of a little bit of a mess. I wasn't really consistent with it. It was a little all over the place. The editing wasn't so great. Uh, But all of that is being rebranded as the Phys Ed Show vlog. I don't really enjoy using Periscope anymore. I don't think the platform is really growing in the way that I'd like to see it grow. Uh, I'm really into YouTube these days. So I'm going to be creating this new vlog that's going to live in YouTube. Um, So you're going to want to probably subscribe to my channel at youtube.com slash the physical educator and it's really going to be a vlog that's going to complement this podcast that I'm going to be able to put out a couple times a month. It'll include videos on lessons, on resources and activities for my teaching. Uh, We'll do some Q&As, I'll do some app demos there and just pretty much anything and everything that I think might just get you fired up in your teaching. I'm also planning on doing a couple live episodes Uh, which I'll be streaming on Facebook Live. So be sure to like the physicaleducator.com's Facebook page at facebook.com slash thephysicaleducator. Now that being said, enough little promotion stuff here. Let's get right into today's episode. Now I'm giving you a heads up. Today's episode's pretty short. And the reason is, is I'm kind of using this as a test just between you and me here. I'm not fully sure what I'm doing right now. I'm just kind of going with it and we'll see what happens. But... I want to make sure I still have some cool content for you for today's episode. In today's episode, I'm going to be sharing with you a teaching tactic known as walk and talks. I was first introduced to the ideas of walk and talks in phys ed by my good friend and buddy Andy Vasley at the 2015 European Council of International Schools Phys Ed Conference in Munich, Germany. Uh, a walk and talk, if you're unfamiliar with the concept, it's pretty simple. Basically, you provide your students with a driving question and then invite them to pair up and walk around the gym as they talk and discuss that question. Even though it's called a walk and talk, your students can jog, they can skip, they can hop, whatever, as long as they're focused on talking and discussing the topic. Once a walk and talk is done, the class comes back in as a group and every group gets to share what they came up with during their discussion. The teacher will take take notes of what was shared and really what you're trying to do here is you're trying to construct knowledge together as a class. Now I love walk and talks and I've been using them in my teaching ever since Andy first introduced me to them out there in Munich. However, I've had a few issues with them. First of all, I've noticed that some students tend to dominate the conversations and other students tend to be a little bit more timid and don't really share. Because of this, it's not really an equitable conversation that's happening and I'm not getting the most out of each student. Second second of all, uh, when I listen into these talks, I'll notice at times that students would share information that wasn't necessarily right and nobody knew how to jump in and correct them. So they just kind of went about it and I was like, okay, well, whatever. 
Uh, and lastly, although I have seen examples of really rich, deep conversation during walk and talks, I've always felt like the procedure in my classroom could be better so that it promotes really productive, engaging conversations for all my students. Sometimes I kind of know students will kind of go out and just kind of talk about whatever and come back and not really have a ton to share. And I was looking to fix that and I wasn't quite sure how. Until earlier this week, we had a professional development opportunity at my school that focused on deeper learning. In the activities, we got to watch a video from EL Education that featured a grade one classroom from Two Rivers Public Charter School in Washington, D.C. In the video, the classroom teacher, Miss Ann Simpson, I tried to find her on Twitter. I couldn't find her. If anybody knows Ann on Twitter, let me know so I can link to her Twitter handle. Um, but in the video, Ann Simpson leads her class into something called a science talk. Science talks are structured conversations that allow students to think about, talk about, and wonder about specific topics and questions. The protocol for a science talk is you get small groups of students, so three or four students, to sit down in a circle. One student is given the mic. In the case of Anne's classroom, they used a popsicle stick. And the student with the mic is the first speaker. Speaking into the mic, the student shares their thoughts on the topic or question as their teammates listen. Once they're done, they hand the mic to a teammate who gets to respond to the speaker's thoughts. Now, this is what I thought was really interesting. Students are given specific formats in which they can respond to thoughts. They can say things like, I agree with blank because of blank, or I disagree with blank because of blank, or I made a connection with blank, or finally, I want to add on to blank. Each student in the group has to take a turn responding to the speaker's thoughts. Once everybody has had a chance to respond, a new speaker is selected and the process is repeated until everybody's had a turn being speaker. In the video, it said that these talks, these science talks, uh, are, allow students to collectively theorize, to build on each other's ideas, to work out thoughts in an equitable conversation, and to build key literacy such as academic vocabulary and oral language. Now, you can imagine that as I was watching the video, all I could think about is how I could bring these conversation protocols into my walk and talks in class to promote deeper, richer conversations and allow every student voice to be heard. Because I want the walk and talks to stay active because of the, we're in physical education class, instead of a mic, I'm thinking it could be some kind of ball or frisbee or some lesson related object that the students can manipulate as they talk with their peers. Same way that my brothers and I will shoot the breeze when we change before a basketball game or how I chat with my running buddy when we go on a lighter jog, I really believe in the power of combining uh, conversation, reflection, and physical activity in order to get minds working and just stimulating uh, thoughts and just getting as many ideas out there as possible. I'm also thinking that what I should do is I should create a few visuals for my classroom that A, illustrate the procedures for a proper walk and talk, and B, provide students with tools and prompts to promote deeper thinking, like the response formats from the science talks. This is done to, in, in order to really support students as they engage in these conversations in class. Although all this formatting around these conversations might sound super structured and maybe a little unnatural in terms of regular conversations, I really believe that instilling these routines, these tools, this culture around equitable group conversations in my younger students will allow them to internalize these strategies and continue to use them so that they continue to use them as they get older. So that was a teaching tactic I wanted to share today, and that wraps up this very first episode, super short episode of the Fizet Show. I'll make sure I link to anything I mentioned here in the show notes, which you'll see me pushing out there on Twitter and Facebook and all the rest of my social media channels. If you enjoy this, please let me know on Twitter. I'm at Fizz Educator. That's at P-H-Y-S underscore E-D-U-C-A-T-O-R. I'd love to hear from you and see what you think of this format. And also, I'd love to hear about how you use group conversations in your classrooms. If you could also do one more thing, if you could just go ahead and leave a five-star review in iTunes, aside from making me feel much better about spending my nights editing podcasts like this, it goes a long way in helping others find out about the Fizet Show, which leads to more subscribers and downloads, which leads to awesome guests that are most likely way more interesting than I am. So once again, I'm Joey Fight from thephysicaledgecare.com. This has been the first episode of the Fizet Show. Thank you so much for listening and happy teaching. <laughs>